Hello again, this time making a kind of second slum town or shanty town. To begin with, to get the basic frame shape, getting some bits of foam core, cutting them to three pieces, and making some T and H shaped frames. Once I'd made about eight or nine of these, I then put them to one side and grab some corrugated cardboard, both the metallic type and the matte paper one, then started cutting out rectangles to cover up each of the sides. Both the metallic and the matte paper one have slightly different finishes to them, so they take paint differently and they'll crumple differently as well. So by combining the two types, you can get some nice little variation. I'm using the corrugated cardboard mostly on the walls, but to fit on the roof of one or two of them as well. But I want a combination of canvas and corrugated steel to be the roof on the majority of them. The advantage of using an H shaped frame instead of just a square one is that you can cut windows into two of the sides as well as a door frame and it'll be more secure. To damage up some of the panelling, I took a pair of scissors and using the blunt side just rolled them across the paper so you'd get some denting and damage where the steel had been knocked around. And you can go overboard with this, or less so. With most of the huts in a reasonable state, I wanted to try something experimental, so taking some wire, bending it into kind of a V-shaped frame and then gluing it on top of a few pieces of styrofoam. And the idea here was to create some kind of tents, or some kind of simple cloth dwellings, so you could add them around the huts and add a bit of variety. Before applying the cloth and plastic glare, I primed them using some black gesso. I'm being a little bit careful on the matte cardboard here because it does soak it in and become a little bit damp if you're not careful. Then taking a turquoise, lighting it up using white paint, I apply that over some of the panels as well as a red colour and a white one so you get a nice bit of variation by keeping it into kind of brighter tones. This might look a bit bright at this point, but it will be weathered down later. To start the weathering, we're going to take a sponge made out of some packaging foam that was just ripped out. Then we're going to take some metallic paint and dab it around a few sections. The main thing to avoid at this point is doing the entire panel consistently, because where you get the wearing away of the paint, it's rarely ever consistent and evenly spread. So you go heavier on some parts and lighter on others. And do a different amount on each of the panels, where some would be newer and some would be older and more worn. To follow this up we need some rust, so taking a burnt umber paint and the sponge again but targeting only the areas that we made silver. So where the metal is exposed it's more likely to be rusted. Again this is something you want to vary up the consistency, go heavier on some areas and lighter on others, maybe where there's more water build up and more damage there'd be more rust. Once dry I took some Mod Podge and attached a few coffee stirrers that have been lightly stained black. This is a good opportunity to cover any of the dodgy looking parts. Then we can move on to the kind of plasticky canvas wrap step, taking some water and some PVA and blending it together till it's mostly combined. We then take some tissue, fold it in half, 
cut it down to size, then soak it in the bath for a second or two. When you take it out, it helps to kind of rinse out a bit of the excess material, give it a light kind of squeeze. But then you can apply it on top or on the sides of the piece where you want there to be a kind of canvas covering. This was mostly used to patch the roofs as well as to create some of the door frames and the coverings there. It's helpful to keep to square or rectangular shapes and then mould it around the piece you're making as that's the usual shape it comes in. I applied the same technique to the small tent things, but I used a piece of clear plastic underneath to prevent it sticking to my cutting board. I also tried to fold the seams so you get a kind of natural looking tent flap at the front, and where there was excess flapping over the edges, I trimmed that down using a pair of scissors once it had dried. To base coat the plastic, I went for a blue, so it looks a bit like that building construction stuff you get. I'm not entirely sure what it's called, but I'm sure it has a name. But you could also go for a brown or a cloth colour, depending on what you want the material to be. I'm going for that kind of plasticky sheet stuff. By using a relatively watered down paint, it generally just absorbs up into the material and makes the painting a lot easier. I applied some watered down paint over the top, mixture of tan and burnt umber, so you get a nice kind of weathery dirt stain on top as well. After that had dried, the sun town was complete. So I got a good few buildings, put them in a few layouts, use them as various bits of cover, and they complement other buildings quite nicely if you put them next to the other sci-fi build. It also stops the layout of the board just being big square buildings, because you can add some interesting shapes and terrain between the two. Get a nice kind of slum town that's built up around it. Not 100% sure about the little tent things I built. I think there's something there, but it definitely needs a bit more development. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope to catch you next time.